All right, so when we last left off, I had a couple seam lines to clean up, one of them being along the cowling here, one in the tail with a couple of little dimples that need to be sanded out. And then on the bottom here, the worst part of lining up on the cooler housing. So that's going to have to be sanded out, and I can show you that for the next few minutes, but really I just come in with some, uh, what grade is this? 600 grit paper, and just lightly start sanding it away. And then real, during the war, it actually took quite the tinsmith or metal worker to design the cowling for the Tempest because the way it wraps around and the way it's shaped to it. It's not an easy shape to build because there's a lot of it's all one section. It's just a little piece of sandpaper, just sand, 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 sand. On top of some sprue goo. I think at this point you get the idea, and then we'll come back to it when I'm ready to scribe. All right, now that everything has been sanded smooth, it's time to come in with the razor saw and clean up the lines and detail that were lost during this sanding. So the easiest way to do it is just lay down some thin tape. I like to use 3M or electrical tape because a little bit flexible, and then instead of trying to hag the hog, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. instead of trying to slice this all off in one go, I'm just going to do nice, slow lines. After a few swipes, there it is. Come in with some Mr. Hobby glue, Mr. Cement, or Tamiya, and just give it a quick wipe, and that'll clean all the dust out of there. And then I have a nice rescribed line. I'm just going to repeat it again for these other ones. Okay, now we're just going to fire some black paint down just to make sure that everything is nice and clean and level, and then I'll come in and rescribe this panel. We'll also check back here as well. Oh. Right now I've thinned this, this with uh, rubbing alcohol, that way it's easier to clean off afterwards. And I'm just using Tamiya X, XF1 Black. Okay, the spine's looking good, there's nothing showing up there. Just a little bit showing on the bottom still, so that'll need another another quick pass. Otherwise, it's not looking too, too bad. One of the last things I have to do before we start getting ready for paint is get the horizontal stab stable editors cleaned up. There's a little bit of a gap along here. And all I'm going to do is fill that in with some sprue goo. It was really stringy before. It felt like it was still a bit, felt like it was still a bit thick. So I ended up adding a little bit more to me a thinner. So now I have this. It looks just like. Mm, how can I really explain this? It looks like that. As long as it's not stringing out and drying now, which is the problem I was having. All right, that's good and stirred up. And now I'm just going to come along. and slowly paint the leading edge. And sprue glue has quickly become my favorite material for filling in gaps because it dries very hard. And as I said in episode one, it also bonds with the styrene. So instead of like super glue or putties that just kind of sit there or blend a little bit, as you sand them, the sprue glue itself, because it's made of the same material and it's got the liquid thinner in there, or sorry, the liquid glue, it bonds and melts right into the plastic, which means a little less cleanup. Because before, when I was using putties, 
It always felt like it would take two layers, sometimes three, to get a nice filled in gap. So that's what I want right there, nice and filled in. I'll let that dry for a couple hours before I sand it down. All right, the last step here is gonna to be to mask the canopy. I don't have an Edward mask for this, but the Tempest windscreen is pretty straightforward. So all I'm gonna do is shine a light from behind, which allows me, if I can see this, allows me to see the edges. And then what I'm gonna do is take a toothpick and just burnish this down to get a nice sharp crease. I want to make sure this is on nice and flat because over the next couple steps with the primers and paints, I don't want this tape to start lifting because if it starts lifting, then I'm just going to bleed underneath and I'll have a lot more cleanup than I really need. So if you're a little gun shy, I know some people will take a pencil and trace this and then take the tape off and cut it. The only thing I find then so if I take the tape off, now it's losing the stickiness, and it tends to lift a little bit while I'm painting. So I pretty much take my chances and cut it while it's still applied. So here we go. I like doing the longest parts first just because it's easier to control. I'm trying to come in at a 45 degree angle so I'm not slicing right on the window but in the crevice. And that helps keep the blade steady. I'm trying to do this while I'm filming. Makes it a little more interesting. There's that one. Now for this semicircle at the bottom. Boom, boom, boom. And then the little one at the top. And this should peel right off if I've done it right. I don't want I don't want the tape to tear away because again I lose that nice clean seal. All right, and now I'm just going to do the other two sides and it'll be ready for paint. And for the main part of the canopy, there's a little bit of a complex curve. That I'm not gonna, and sorry. There's no real definition where the edge of that metal piece ends the bracing and the plexiglass would be. So to mask this, I'm going to have to cut some thin strips of tape and follow that curve because I'm not going to be able to use that same flashlight technique to make this work. And the reason I just don't use the edge of the tape itself is even though it's somewhat square, it doesn't have a nice, sharp, clean edge because your tape's going to collect all the dust and stuff that's in a bag or wherever you store it. So by cutting the edge, you get a nice, sharp definition. Using Fusion 360, I designed a simple engine mount and a guide for drilling holes to keep everything nice and centered in the kit. Because Edward doesn't actually give you anything to mount the propeller to to be able to spin it afterwards, it kind of made things easier because then there was nothing to delete and I could pretty much start from scratch. 
the base of the propeller sat nicely in the guide on the ridge and kept everything nice and aligned for drilling. Once everything had been test fitted a few times and there was no interference, it was time to put it in place with some super glue. Because my original plan of removing the wings to replace the battery and to turn the motor on wasn't going to work, I decided to use a hollow aluminum tube to run the wiring down through and run it to an external switch. I left the post in place while the sprue glue dried, that way I'd be able to remove it afterwards to make it easier to paint and continue handling. And then I filled in the gap at the rear of the trailing edge of the wing with some more sprue goo. And then it's time for some more sanding. That's going to make a great spot to end this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's answered some of your questions, especially if you're new to building models. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Robbie the Model Guy. And if you wish to, you can support the channel on Patreon and be able to get behind the scenes, see what's going on at the bench, see what builds are coming up next, and what hectic things are happening. I tend to use that more as a blog, so you get more raw information. And I also upload a lot more photos over there. So you can join these fine people as well. One thirty second scale supporters get to see videos one week early, and the 148 guys get to see it 24 hours before it drops, all without ads. This has been another episode of the Tempest build. I am the model guy. And as always, leave your comments in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe, and let your friends know about the channel.